Hello everyone. Uh, sorry for the change in presentation here. I'm away from my home computer and uh, using my laptop to record this. Uh, yes, it is a, an Apple. I apologize. Anyway, sorry for you Apple fans. Um, so, today we're going to continue talking about cams. Just a second, let me make sure I'm actually recording on this stupid thing. Yes, I am. There we go. All right, cams three. Uh, today we're mainly going to talk about how to size the base circle of a cam. So um, we won't get into gears today. We'll just we'll just wrap up cams. So what we've talked about so far is uh, how to make position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk graphs. Uh, what's acceptable for that? What's not? And we've talked about. Um, you know, the mathematical functions to connect the dots between the dwells and our timing diagrams. Uh, so mainly what we're going to talk about now is how to size the base circle radius here for a cam. So you'll probably hear my dogs in the background too here. Uh, so uh, a few more definitions. Uh, that's Murray. He's drinking water right now. Uh, base circle is the radius down here. Uh, that's the radius of the actual metal that we're going to grind on the cam. Prime circle radius here, that's a little different. So the prime circle radius is the radius of the base circle, the actual metal, plus the radius of a follower, if we have a roller follower. So for a flat follower, the prime circle and base circle will be the same. For a roller follower, uh, we generate the prime circle from our S graph and our SVAJ diagram, uh, and we have to, at each point, at a perpendicular to the surface subtract off the follower radius to get the actual metal we're going to grind. So that's the difference between prime circle and base circle. Uh, how do we get this cam profile? All we do, so for a roller follower pattern, we take our S curve and we add on our prime circle radius to that. So you just take every point, so from 0 to 360 degrees, you take your S value and you add your prime circle and wrap that around in a circle. So you can easily do that in Excel with what's called a radar plot. Uh, you just plot S from 0 to 360 degrees and insert a radar plot of that column and it gives you a nice cam profile as I'll show you here in a second. Uh, so changing this base circle radius changes a lot of things. That's the main thing we're going to talk about is what's was acceptable for that. So uh, let's start with the cam profile. Uh, this is a simple sinusoidal. So this would be the bad profile since we've got this discontinuity here in acceleration. Uh, but what we're going to do to turn this into metal is we're going to add a prime circle radius to this. And what the metal would look like for uh, different profiles, and this would be um, a half inch added onto it. So here the minimum radius is a half inch, and then we add this S curve. So we add a half inch to every point on that, we wrap it around in a circle, and we get this metal. Now if we were going to use a roller follower on this, at each point along this we're going to have to construct a perpendicular and subtract off the roller follower radius. Uh, and you can see there's a really tight tight small radius here uh, and I really need a really tiny roller to get through that. And we'll talk about what what the, the, that failure mode's called if the follower is so big it can't actually interpolate through here. Uh, so this would not be the metal for a roller follower. I'd have to actually go through and do an offset. So uh, that's actually fairly complicated to calculate because it basically at each point you have to calculate the normal vector and then subtract off along the normal vector your follower radius. That's what the offset function in a CAD sketch does. Uh, so you could import these points into a CAD program like NX or SolidWorks or something and then just offset the curve using the offset function built in. Uh, and actually get the metal. You're going to have to get this into a CAD program anyway, so that, that works. So you just import the prime circle and the, the pitch curve here for the cam, uh, and then use offset to get it in. You could do it mathematically too if you wanted to make a program. Uh, doing it in Excel, I guess you could do, yeah, you could do it in Excel pretty easily. I've not done it before. You just have to find the equation for the normal to a curve, which I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, you could find the tangent, find the angle, and add 90 degrees to it, or subtract 90 degrees to it. Uh, you, you know, you have to do a little bit of 
remembering what the equation for the normal or tangent to a curve are. Uh, or you can just Google it and find it. And you can find the angle and then subtract off uh, along that vector, uh, whatever your follower radius is. Uh, for a flat follower, this would be the actual metal you would grind. And you can see this is concave here, which would basically kill it for a flat follower. The flat follower is going to dig in here uh, and this thing's going to going to die. So uh, for roller follower, we need to subtract off at each point along the normal. You don't simply subtract the follower radius from the S plus prime circle radius. That's a totally different thing. That's not an offset. Uh, you actually have to construct the normal at each point on this curve and subtract that off. So it's offset, not just a simple subtraction from the S plus prime circle radius thing. So it's, you got to be careful about that. Uh, so when I make the base circle radius, prime circle radius bigger. So if it's a flat follower, those are interchangeable. Prime circle and base circle are the same. Um, if this was a roller follower, this would be the prime circle radius. The base circle would be, uh, in this case, it would be it here. It'd be this minus your follower radius. So here, if I had a half inch follower, my actual base circle would be a half inch. My prime circle would be, be one inch. So for a flat follower, they're the, they're the same thing because I don't have to do that offset function. Uh, note that as I make the base circle radius bigger, again, if this is a flat follower, at some point in time I get rid of these concavities uh, and this thing would take a flat follower. Like Still, there's a little bit of concavity here, so a flat follower is not going to work. So here with a base circle radius of four inches, I can finally put a flat follower on this thing and it would be fine. A roller follower is going to be fine for this. Uh, this radius actually gets bigger when I offset it in here. Uh, so I, I could actually put a roller follower on this. It might have to be kind of small, uh, but it, it's actually doable. Whereas if I wanted a flat follower, I, I'd have to uh, make the base circle gigantic. If this was like an automotive cam profile, this is gigantic, right? This is a 10 inch diameter chunk of metal that I'm going to grind this thing out of. Uh, if you know anything about automotive cams, that's comically large. Uh, you're talking about more like a two and a half inch diameter uh, billet of material. So if this was my automotive cam profile, uh, this isn't going to work. Now I'm not going to have an inch of lift either, but uh, this, this would not be suitable at all for an automotive application more than likely. Okay, uh, limiting factors, uh, other limiting factors other than this, this uh, concavity thing, pressure angle. So pressure angle is the difference from a line formed by the center line of my cam, uh, so the point at which the cam is going to rotate, to along the axis of the follower, uh, that line versus a line that is normal to the contact plane. So here is the contact plane normal. Here is the center line of the follower. Uh, you can see there's an angle in this case. That angle is going to change. That's the pressure angle. Uh, 0 to 30 degrees is the good range for that. Once you start getting past 30 degrees, you start to get uh, weird side loading and binding issues, maybe slip. Uh, you're going to have problems. So you want that to be close to 0. It's going to vary, but you really want it between 0 and 30 degrees if, if you can. Uh, eccentricity, that's how much the axis of the follower is offset from the cam center line. So that is the linear distance, a perpendicular distance between the cam center and the axis of the follower. So here you can see there's a little bit of an offset there. Uh, we get call, give that symbol epsilon for the eccentricity. Uh, that's going to be measured in units of inches or millimeters, some unit of length. Uh, it'll be plus or minus. Uh, now, you're really, there's not any real good reasons for eccentricity except maybe in an asymmetric cam profile uh, you might be able to use it to uh, help out pressure angle and I'll show a plot of that here in a second. Uh, we can use the equation for pressure angle to plot this. It's real easy. Uh, it's just some simple geometry here. Uh, it's V from our SVAJ diagram, so the velocity. Uh, so we have that plotted from our SVAJ diagram. We've already have that calculated from 0 to 360 degrees or whatever increment of angle we're going to use. Uh, we subtract off epsilon from that, uh, our eccentricity, which would be a constant. This is S from our SVAJ diagram. Uh, this is our prime circle radius. Again, base circle radius if it's the same, if it's a flat follower. If it's a round, if you're going to use a roller follower, this is the prime circle radius, which is the radius, the actual path the center line of the follower is going to follow. Uh, that would be this circle in this case. 
Uh, so that's the difference between prime and base. Again, this is the, the prime circle radius, which would only be the base circle if it was a flat follower. Uh, and then here minus epsilon squared. So when I plot that, uh, this is for a prime circle radius of a half inch, the blue curve. You can see the pressure angle spikes up here somewhere close to 50 degrees, which would be unacceptable. Uh, so bad, bad pressure angle issues on this, this profile here. Uh, if I increase that prime circle radius to 4 inches, which is the gigantic 10 inch diameter billet of material cam, uh, I'm down here in the acceptable range. So, you know, I could make that prime circle radius a little smaller and uh, get my pressure angle closer to 30 and have a smaller cam profile that, that's got an acceptable pressure angle. Uh, the effect of adding eccentricity to this thing, so this is adding uh, 0.2 units, inches, millimeters, whatever it is you're measuring. Um, adding some eccentricity into this shifts this curve up for negative. If we made it positive, it'd shift it down. Note that it makes it bigger everywhere. So uh, you can see how this wouldn't, for a symmetric rise fall, uh, where your, your mathematical function for the rise is the same for the fall, it just doesn't make any sense because it makes it worse here, it makes it better here. So if I have a pressure angle problem, it's only going to make it worse here, which you don't want to do. It's going to make it a little better here, and it makes it not zero. In this case, it makes it really not zero uh, right here. So you don't want to do this uh, unless you have an asymmetric rise fall. So where your rise and fall functions are different, maybe you can use some eccentricity to fix a pressure angle problem on one of these peaks. That would be really the only case where you'd want eccentricity uh, from a performance perspective. Now, from a packaging perspective, trying to fit this in a cylinder head or something or some other application, you might want to put some eccentricity in there just, just for packaging. Uh, and then you do your pressure angle and make sure it's, it's okay. Uh, but again, from a performance perspective, you only really would want it for an asymmetric rise fall, which is, it, it exists. It's pretty rare in automotive applications, but uh, it, it exists for industrial cams for sure. And here, here's a good example of a very asymmetric rise and fall. Okay, there's two major follower size issues we have to worry about. Uh, one is multiple contact. The other is undercutting. Uh, multiple contact is when the follower radius is larger than the minimum convex, oh, sorry, concave radius. Follower radius is larger than the minimum concave radius. So this is the minimum concave radius. If the minimum concave radius is smaller than the follower radius, the follower cannot interpolate through here and it's gonna be rolling and then all of a sudden it's gonna bang in here. It's gonna make mult contact in two places, hence multiple contact. Uh, and it's not going to interpolate smoothly through here, so you're not going to get your SVAJ diagram you design. In fact, you're going to almost for sure get something that does not meet the fundamental rules of CAM design. So uh, you're going to get some discontinuities. It's going to tear itself to pieces at some point, and you don't get what the what SVAJ diagram you designed for. So uh, that's an issue, something you have to check for for a roller follower. Uh, there's a simple fix for this. Make your follower smaller. Uh, now, this says much less than it doesn't have to be much less than you know when I hear much less than I think an order of magnitude this doesn't have to be an order of magnitude smaller than this uh, it just needs to be small enough to interpolate through here smoothly a good example another example of this is in CNC machining like if I was going to actually machine this cam profile I have to use an end mill that is smaller than this radius uh, now if I use one that's exactly the same radius the tool just goes into here stops and then turns direction and then travels around and it creates a little dwell mark and causes problems. Same thing would happen here if my follower radius is equal to the minimum concave radius this thing's just going to come in here and crash and contact all along the radius here and then it's going to come popping out of it and it's not going to be good. So uh, you know if this was three quarters this minimum radius it would interpolate fairly smoothly through there. So probably somewhere you know 50 percent uh, would be fine. So if this was 50% the minimum concave radius, you're, you're going to be good. But it mainly just needs to be less than. Anything equal to or greater than is going to be a large problem. So that's multiple contact. Undercutting. So uh, undercutting is when you take your prime circle radius and when you do that offset function to generate the metal, if here in this case, it, this is the case where the follower radius is equal to the minimum convex radius. So this is the minimum convex radius. So if the follower is equal 
follower radius is equal to the minimum convex radius, when I do that offset function, I get a cusp here. And you can see how that would cause problems because this thing is going to roll over this and you're going to get contact on a point and it's going to smear this point off and kill your cam profile. So uh, that's not good. Uh, if I go even further and the minimum convex radius is this, and then I subtract off my, so I'll do this offset function here, then I get, I, it doesn't work at all, because when I, when I start here, and then go to the next point along this curve, so starting here, and then offset, it's there, and then when I go here and offset, it's there, when I go here, it's there, and I get this cusp thing here that doesn't exist, there's no metal out here. Uh, so what that means, when the cam actually follows this thing, it's going to crash over this cusp. It's not going to be out here at all. Who knows what it's going to do. And it's going to smear this point off and then do be even worse. So uh, I need the minimum convex radius to be larger than the follower radius to avoid undercutting. So uh, the easiest way to remember this is follower size is about the minimum concave radius. I need the follower to be able to interpolate through those concavities. Uh, undercutting is about the convex radius, the minimum convex radius. I need to be able to offset the roll follower, so it's the follower needs to be able to be offset from the minimum convex radius and not form a cusp. So undercutting and multiple contact. Uh, so this is a simple check of your prime. Well, I guess you actually this is the actual metal. So for a roller follower, you've already have to do the offset function anyway. So you do your prime circle, uh, you plot the actual center line position of this cam, and then you would offset in to get the metal, and then you'd have to check it after that. So you're still going to have to do the offset function for the follower size to check this. Uh, same for undercutting. You're going to have your, your pitch here for your cam. Uh, you're going to subtract off the follower your radius at each one of these points, perpendicular at each point. Okay, that's that offset function. Uh, and then you're, you're going to have to check the minimum convex radius to uh, your follower size. So uh, either way, if these are issues only for roller followers, uh, but you got to check both cases. Uh, so I, I described this one as the lawn mowing problem. If you've ever mown a lot of yards, you know that uh, as you mow, like the first pass you make around a yard on the outside, you never have any problems with this. But as you mow more and more and more and get closer to the center, you start to get little corners that your mower deck has some finite radius. And you just really, in your turn, mower can only turn so tight unless it's a zero turn. Uh, and you get at some point where your steering radius isn't enough and you can't actually get around the turn. So you've got a problem where you either have to you know, go around and then kind of back up and then go forward. Or you can kind of do a little loopy thing like this. But it, it, it's a problem. That's why zero turn mowers exist is because they have a zero turning radius. So you can just get here and then interpolate around. Your cam can't do that. Uh, so you need to make sure that whenever your minimum convex radius here is such that whenever you offset the radius of the cam, you don't get undercutting problems. Again, probably the best way to check all this is to, you, you could make a computer program or spreadsheet where you could calculate what the actual metal would be by doing that offset function. Again, you have to calculate the perpendicular. You have to subtract off, from each point, you have to subtract off a position vector that is along the perpendicular that has a distance of the follower radius to get that. And it gets a little more complicated than just adding S plus the prime circle radius. And CAD works great for that. That's, that's what the offset function in CAD programs do is in fact that calculation. So I would trust that better than something uh, that you would write in a program. Uh, pitch radius, uh, you can calculate that uh, in if you need to. So that's the uh, instantaneous pitch radius along this curve. Uh, so here's an equation for doing that. So if you did want to check undercutting, this this gives you a way of doing it. You're still going to have to check the concave thing. Uh, but here's the pitch radius. It's RP prime circle radius plus S squared plus V squared. Then to the 3 halves divided by prime circle plus S squared plus 2V squared minus a times prime circle plus s. So this is prime circle radius plus position for all this and then the v, s, and j, sorry, v, a, and s from your, your SBAJ diagram. Uh, and then here's this plotted. This one's a little weird. It's got a step here. Uh, but um, 
or for a decent cam profile you'll get it'll look a little bit like this but it won't have these these steps here okay uh so in general what you'll find is when you make the prime circle radius better everything gets better so that's usually the solution to pressure angle problems is make the prime circle radius better uh, for undercutting in multiple contact you can make the prime circle radius bigger or you can make the follower radius smaller. At some point in time, your follower is going to get so small that it's not it, the the RPM is going to be really high, and you might have problems for that, or the stress might be high. Uh, so there's going to be some minimum follower radius before your your little roller here is so small that you get get problems from that. Okay, so uh, that is going to wrap up cams. I'll give a homework on that later. We still need to get through homework for. Uh, balancing so this will be homework 8 uh, it will be due this Friday uh, so this is a pretty simple static balancing problem a lumped mass so I'm gonna give you a carbon fiber rim here I'm gonna give you the mass properties of each of these spokes so slender rod uh, you can look up the equations well I guess center mass for cylinder, cylinder rods easy right it's it's halfway up it so one spoke, this first spoke is 0.13 kilograms, 320 millimeters, 89 degrees from the x-axis here. Uh, second spokes down here, a third spokes here, outer rims out here. Uh, add a single mass to balance this wheel. The, the mass must be somewhere on the rim. I'm going to add a mass somewhere on the rim to balance this uh, simple static balancing problem. And remember, all you're going to do in this is find the combined CG location and then put a mass 180 degrees out of phase with that mass times radius for the balancing weight it's going to be mass times radius for the combined center of mass of the wheel and that's that's all you got to do on this uh, 8.2 is a dynamic balance this would be balancing a crankshaft here uh, I give you the two forces so two pounds at negative 85 one and a half pounds at negative 96 that's from the positive x-axis use right hand thumb rule and y and z uh, for those uh, radius for the balancing weights is given here. I want them at two inches from this crank center line. Uh, this, these forces were measured at a thousand RPM. You'll need to convert that to radians per second. You might be able to hear that this moose that's snoring in the background there, if you can hear that. Uh, that's my hundred pound lab Malamute mix. Uh, anyway, so these are the forces on the crankshaft so these would be the equal and opposite of the forces that the balancer bearings would measure go back to the balancing lecture for an explanation of that uh, but these are the forces you can directly plug into the equations as we derive them so you don't have to do anything to these just find the x and y components of them uh, this is just a simple plug and chug following the dynamic balancing example so what i would do for this one is probably just make a spreadsheet and make sure it gives you the results from the example on that slide uh, and then plug the numbers in from here. Uh, you check the Z direction. Uh, I can't remember if it's the same as the slide. Uh, that'll just change how you measure your Z coordinates here. Like So this would be negative three, this would be negative, sorry, the origins here. So this would be plus three, negative eight, negative 11. So just watch the sign on your Z coordinates. That depends on which way this, this Z goes here. So that's eight one and eight two. Those will be due this Friday. That's it for this lecture. I'll give you a CAMS homework next week. Uh, so we'll start into gears uh, later this week. So that's it for today. Thank you.